Hey everyone, this video is on an introduction to quantum theory and black body radiation. A black body is an idealized object that absorbs all radiation of all frequencies and wavelengths that falls within the vicinity of the object. The word idealized means that this type of object that can absorb all radiation does not exist but provides a model that we can use to study the behavior of radiation that can be absorbed and emitted by real life objects that are not black bodies. Black bodies can absorb all radiation and they can also emit radiation. Radiation emitted by a black body is what we call a black body radiation. There are numerous examples of radiation emitting objects whose energy can be modeled as a black body. For example, the radiation emitted by stars and hot metals. This graph on the right hand side demonstrates why the radiation from different objects is different in color. The appearance of radiation is determined by the relative intensity of visible light of different wavelengths. The relative intensity is affected by the object's temperature. For a 3000 Kelvin black body or object, the color of the radiation will be red, as there's predominantly a high intensity of red light, as was infrared light. But the appearance will be, of course, determined by the visible light that it emits. As the temperature of the object increases, the radiation curve will shift towards the left side of the graph, causing there to be a higher intensity of green light being emitted. As the temperature increases further, the radiation will adopt a blue color because the intensity of light of the blue wavelength increases. So for these two examples of stars and hot metals, which appear to emit red and orange color light, we can expect the temperatures to be around 3000 to 4000 kelvins somewhere between the red wavelength and the green predominant wavelength of visible light. We'll discuss this relationship between temperature and wavelength of radiation in more detail later. This model of radiation of a black body can also be used and observed in different types of light bulbs. An incandescent lamp or filaments predominantly emits infrared radiation and a very small intensity of red visible light. This results in light that is dim and red in color. In contrast, light bulbs that emit radiation, which consist of a greater intensity of visible light, such as yellow and orange, will appear to be brighter due to the high intensity, and of course more yellow rather than red. The difference between the colors or the appearance of light emitted by these two types of light bulbs is attributed to the difference in temperature. The incandescent filament or lamp has a lower temperature of roughly 1000 kelvins as compared to the much brighter yellow light that has a temperature of 2000 kelvins. On the right hand side, I've got different examples of objects that can be emitting radiation. We can pretend that they are black bodies, that is, they absorb all radiation and they emit them in different ways. In the graph here, you can see the intensity of radiation versus the wavelength at which they're being emitted. Now, as I'm dragging this temperature meter, as I drag to light bulb, you can see the temperature is approaching 3000 kelvins. And at 3000 kelvins, the area under the curve is relatively small, meaning that the amount of power or intensity emitted by a light bulb is relatively small compared to what we will be going through in a moment. The peak wavelength here will be just out of the visible light spectrum in the infrared region, but we can see that it's also emitting a small amount of red light, as well as green light, yellow, and orange light. And for this light bulb, the color will appear to be orange. As I'm increasing the temperature further, the light bulb can reach a temperature of, let's say, 4000 kelvins. In this case, there is, is a higher intensity of visible light, which means the light bulb will appear to be brighter. And at the same time, there's also a greater proportion of blue and green light. And this makes the light bulb appear to be less red and orange and more of a neutral color or white color. As I'm increasing the temperature even further, and as I'm reaching to the sun, the surface temperature of the sun is about 5,800 kelvins. And you can see the total area under the curve is drastically larger compared to the other light bulb. And of course, this should make sense because the amount of energy emitted by the sun should be a lot higher compared to the light bulb. This time, most of the graph is predominantly in the visible light spectrum. And because it's emitting all the wavelengths, that's why the color of radiation emitted by the sun will be more of a white color. Now, stars have different temperatures. As I'm increasing it to about 10,000 kelvins, this is where I get to a different star called Sirius A. And you can see the whole graph is actually off the chart. The total area under the curve is significantly larger compared to that of the sun. 
which means this star emits radiation that has a much higher power and intensity compared to the sun. Now, majority of this radiation will be in the ultraviolet and the blue slash violet part of the visualized spectrum. And this is the reason why Sirius A, instead of appearing to be red or orange, it will adopt a blue color, as this is the color for the visible light wavelength that corresponds to the higher temperature of 10,000 kelvins. So I'll go through that again. So as I'm increasing the temperature, I want to notice how the area under the radiation graph is increasing which is indicative of the total energy and the peak wavelength that is the maximum value of the bell-shaped curve is also moving towards the left it's shifting towards a shorter wavelength value as this is shifting to the left in the visible light spectrum it will dictate the actual color of the appearance of the object that it is emitting the radiation before we discuss black body radiation in more detail i want to talk a bit about how we arrive at the model we just saw Prior to the current model on black body radiation, the old classical model of physics predicted a drastically different model for black body radiation. The theory predicted that the intensity of black body radiation is inversely proportional to its wavelength. So that means as the wavelength of radiation shortens or becomes shorter, its intensity increases. This relationship between intensity of radiation and its wavelength was also known as Rayleigh Jeans law. The classical model hypothesized that the energy emitted by black body, according to this model, is continuous and is a function of temperature. The term continuous means that the total amount of energy exists on a continuous spectrum and can be any numerical value. It is also a function of temperature, meaning that higher a black body's temperature, the more energy it emits. To people surprised at the time, the prediction and model by classical physics was not supported by experimental data that measured the intensity of radiation emitted by objects that are close to a black body. Experiments have consistently shown that instead of increasing, the intensity of radiation actually reaches a maximum value and decreases as the wavelength becomes shorter past this maximum value. The experimental data is often referred to as a bell-shaped curve. And these experiments have also shown that as the temperature of the radiation emitting object increases, the peak of these bell-shaped curves shifts to the left and the area under each curve increases. Although the mathematical predictions made by the classical model were consistent with experimental values for longer wavelengths, the discrepancy between the prediction and experimental evidence becomes increasingly evident at shorter wavelengths, specifically near and in the ultraviolet region of the electromagnetic spectrum. This discrepancy between experimental data and prediction made by the classical model was therefore termed the ultraviolet catastrophe. In response to the ultraviolet catastrophe, physicist Max Planck provided an ad hoc explanation in his quantum theory. The term ad hoc means that an explanation and theory were developed after the relevant experimental results that we saw in the bell-shaped curve. In the quantum theory, Planck proposed that the energy of black body radiation is emitted in discrete packet of energy called a quantum or plural quanta. The energy of one quantum is given by the equation h multiplied by f, where h is the Planck's constant 6.626 multiplied by 10 to minus 34. This is an extremely small number and f is the frequency of the radiation. Planck suggested that the intensity of black body radiation is determined by the number of quanta of a specific frequency or wavelength. This is in contrast to the previous classical model, which proposed that the intensity of radiation actually is inversely proportional to the wavelength. While the energy of one quantum is given by Planck's constant multiplied the frequency, the total energy of all quanta of a particular frequency or wavelength is therefore n multiplied by the energy of one quantum, where n is a total number of quanta that possesses a specific frequency value. And the value of n must be a whole number as the number of quanta present must be integral and finite. This model of black body radiation means that the total energy is finite, it always has a discrete maximum value. Let's compare the classical model with the quantum model of black body radiation. The classical model hypothesized that the energy emitted by a black body is continuous, that is, it lies on a continuous spectrum. 
and an intensity of radiation is inversely proportional to its wavelength. So as the wavelength decreases, the intensity of radiation increases. In contrast, the quantum model states that energy is quantized, which means it consists of discrete packets of energy called quanta. The energy of each unit, which is a quantum, is given by Planck's constant multiplied by the frequency of the quantum. Planck also proposed in his quantum model that the intensity of the radiation depends on the number of quantum that possesses a specific value for frequency slash wavelength. The clear difference that's evident between the classical model and the quantum model of black body radiation is that the quantum model implies that energy is discontinuous. The total amount of energy equals to a specific value as it consists of an integral number of these energy units. For example, if each unit of energy or quantum has an energy value of 10 joules, then the total energy of all the quanta together must be a multiple of 10 joules. So if we've got two quanta, then the energy total will be 20 joules. If we have three quanta, it will be 30 joules. If we have four quanta, it will be 40 joules. No matter how many quanta there are, the total number must be a multiple of 10 joules. So for example, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. As you can see, the total energy value is discontinuous as it cannot be equal to any of the values between the multiples of 10. So it can't be 15, it can't be 17, it can't be 21, it must be a multiple of 10 joules. The values between the energy of each quantum is therefore forbidden in the quantum theory. What I want you to be aware of is that the energy of one quantum is a very small number because the value of h, which is Planck's constant, has an extremely small value. Therefore, you should understand that the contribution of one quantum to the total amount of energy is very small. The energy of radiation of a particular wavelength is usually attributed to a large number of quanta that possesses a specific value of frequency or wavelength. Let's bring it back to the radiation versus wavelength graph. Planck's quantum theory proposes that energy of one quantum is dependent on the quantum's wavelength or frequency, given by the equation, of course, E equals to hf, or h times by c, which is speed of light, divided by lambda, which is a wavelength of radiation. Planck also proposed that the intensity of radiation depends on the number of quanta that possesses a particular wavelength or frequency. This theory explains why the total energy of radiation emitted by a black body has a specific maximum value. It is finite rather than infinite. Planck explained that intensity of radiation decreases for shorter wavelengths because there are fewer number of quanta that possesses the values of these shorter wavelengths. Vice versa, for the peak region of the bell-shaped curve, there's a higher intensity because there are more quanta that possesses the frequency or wavelength values in these regions. As such, the quantum theory, by considering the energy of radiation as quantized or individual discrete units, it was able to provide an adequate explanation to resolve the ultraviolet or UV catastrophe. Calculate the energy of one quantum with a frequency of 2 times 10 to 8 hertz. So we know from quantum theory, energy of one quantum is given by Planck's constant times by the frequency. Planck's constant has a value of 6.626 times 10 to minus 34 multiplied by the frequency, which is 2 times 10 to 8 hertz. This energy is roughly equal to 1.33 times 10 to the power minus 25 joules. The radiation in part A has an intensity of 100 watts per meter squared. How many quanta are striking a 5 meter square area per second? The power of this radiation is given by the intensity multiplied by the area. The intensity is 100 watts per meter squared, but we are considering a 5 meter squared area. So the power here is 100 watts per meter squared multiplied by 5 meters squared. And that gives me a power of 500 watts. Now here, remember that watts is also the same or equivalent to 500 joules per second. This means every second, there are 500 joules of energy striking the 5 meter square area. So the question is asking how many quanta are there per second? So we know that in one second, there's 500 joules of energy and the energy value of one quantum is 1.33 times 10 to the minus 25. That means the number 
of quanta is equal to the total energy in one second, 500, divided by 1.33 times 10 to minus 25 joules, which is the energy in one quantum. This gives me a value of 3.77 times 10 to 27. This is the total number quanta striking the 5 meter square area every second. To conclude the video, I want to quickly discuss Wien's displacement law, which describes the relationship between the wavelength of radiation that has a maximum intensity versus the temperature of the black body or the object that emits the radiation. Wien's displacement law states that the wavelength of maximum intensity, so that is the wavelength at which the maximum intensity of radiation is observed, as you can see by my red arrows, is inversely proportional to the temperature of the object. B is a proportionality constant, and that's also known as Wien's constant. This has a value of 2.898 times 10 to the minus 3. This simple law tells us that the higher the temperature of the object, the shorter the peak wavelength will be. As you look at objects with higher temperature, you will notice that the bell curve shape is shifting towards the side of the graph that has a shorter wavelength. So for 3000 kelvins, this is around 1000 nanometers. For 4000 kelvins, this is around 700 nanometers. And when we get to 6000 kelvins, this is approaching 500 nanometers. When we plot the peak wavelength as a temperature, we can see a hyperbolic relationship. And if we plot the peak wavelength against the inverse or the reciprocal of the temperature of the object, we'll get a straight line where the gradient of the straight line is Wien's constant. Wien's displacement law can be used in lots of different scenarios that involve radiation emitting objects. One such example is the sun. The sun has a surface temperature of 5,700 kelvins. What is the wavelength of the maximum intensity of the solar radiation? We can recognize that the lambda max or the peak wavelength is equal to B divided by the temperature. B is 2.898 times 10 to minus 3 divided by the surface temperature, which is 5,700 kelvins, and this gives me a value of 5.08 times 10 to the minus 7 meters, and this is equal to 508 nanometers. This concludes the video on quantum theory and black body radiation.